Time Smart. Ashley Williams. Introduction. The art and science of being time smart. Time and money, they share a lot in common. Both are measurable, and both are scarce. Both are what most of us would say are the most valuable things we can have. We want more time, and we want more money, and we work to get them. But as young adult, we learn quickly than what for all their similarities. Time and money are set against each other, and it seems to stay that way for the rest of our working lives. It is difficult to gain as much of both as we want. Mostly, we are choosing between them, making trade-offs. The old aphorism, if you have the money, you don't have the time. And if you have the time, you don't have the money, seems true. Over and over, we find ourselves choosing between time and money. Cook or eat out, work or go on vacation. Find a second job or spend more time with the kinds. I become fascinated with the trade-offs people make between time and money when I was a PhD student, in part because a PhD student liked as a conscious choice to trade money for time, to spend years becoming an expert on new ideas with very little financial reward. To quell my curiosity, I survived thousands of working adults around the world, from Danish millionaires to working parents and single moms living day by day in the United States, East Africa and India, about those to very simple, universally valuable resources, time and money. What surprised me most about people's answers was the disconnect between how important many of those time and money decisions were and how trivial they seemed in the moment. Those trade-offs are you so seemingly dual or obvious. We often don't even realize we are making them again and again in my research and in my life. Because once you start paying attention to this topic, you cannot escape it. It is the lens through which you see people and their choices. I have heard stories about the decisions people make about time and money. Those stories show that those decisions snack up on us. And then any given choice, whether it's a big decision like what career to choice or a teeny decision, like whether to use those last two vacation days, seems to be inconsequential and easy to reverse. But it is not. All of those decisions powerfully shape the happens we derive from moments, from days, from our entire lives. These decisions affect everyone, not only the financial affluent. If anything, people with favor means have more to gain by thinking critical about how they make decisions about time and money. Some of the examples I discuss in this book involve professional and the well-to-do including millionaires, millionaires, but others illustrated the trade-offs faced by single moms in developing countries who are living day by day. I also share stories of companies helping diverse groups of people effectively navigate time and money, trade-offs from Silicon Valley. Companies offering computer engineers how security leaning service to a startup helping the poor, poorest Americans save time by transforming their communities. communities. In my research, almost everyone from SEO to students to working parents face trade-offs between time and money and can I improve their decisions making in the moments when they choose? Time and money in daily life. Several stories from my research stick with me as prototypical of those facing time, facing time and money decisions. Nicole was a newly minted executive at a major credit cards company. Thomas, her husband, was a busy witty. They were rarely in the same city and had not taken a vacation together in years. One day, Thomas received a play pleasant surprise, courtesy of a generous client. He was offered the chance to extend to his work trip by a week and enjoy the Swiss Alps. Alps. All expenses paid. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Thomas played it with his wife. Nicole, please come. It only was a few days. Nicole sing signed and said, I cannot. I have an important meeting that I shall so not miss. Thomas hears the slopes with his sister Leah instead, and the sibling enjoyed what they both deemed, deemed the best trip ever. Five years later, they still talk about this dumb trip. Nicole told me. And whenever they do, Thomas asked me, Nicole, what was that meeting about again? To be honest, I cannot remember. He always replies, that important, ha. Huh. Later, Nicole admitted that she had vacation time available. And the meeting was optional. Her team would have been fine without her. But at the time, it seemed too important to her. She just felt she should be there. 
Thomas and Leah made memories that will last a lifetime. While Nicholas' important work obligation have faded into the past. During a recent wild visit in rural India, 15 years old, Isha explained to me the daily decisions she has to make, spend time getting and transporting water. In large, heavy urns ba balanced on her head to support her family or attend school. I have to fetch water from wells and ponds, which takes hours every day and leaves me no time to attend school. I want to be a teacher, but I do not have time to study because of, the, of these chores, which are killing my dreams. Without help, I will like a life of poverty, poverty filled with known darkness and illiteracy. Also, most of our lives are very different from Isha's, many working partners. I have talked to feel a similar tension between supporting their families versus working more hours or going back to school. Society needs to help Isha's every year feel that they have the time and support to choose school over horse. Another story that is never far from my mind is that of Elise, a first-generation college student. She paid her own way through school and working her way up from research assistance to PhD. After graduation, she was lucky enough to be afraid to jobs that could be classified as dream jobs. Job 1. Offered res reasonable house, social connection and meaning. It will allow her to live in her hometown, surrounded by friends and family. She would make much more money, but would contribute her skills to the community by working for a local government. Job 2. Afraid money and pres prestige. It's prestige. It's regulate a cross-country move to a new city. Alice will be given more opportunities than she even imagined, having grown up as a daughter of a male carrier in a small town. She chose Job 2 without much hesitation. At that time, it seemed, seemed like a no-brainer. Alice and her partners of 8 years, Paul, did not have kids. It will be the adventure of a lifetime, and hard work now will lead to many opportunities later. Except when they settled in, Paul was miserable. Alice traveled a lot, and Paul had no job and no friends to turn to. After three months, he moved home, and they partnered that ways forever. Alice was devastated, but under contract. All she could do was keep working. Later than year, while Alice was working overseas, her best friend had her first child. Then Alice, his cousin, passed away. The funeral was scheduled at the same time as a work trip. Alice told herself what many of us tell ourselves when we sacrifice our time for job and money. It is fine. I am doing this now, so I will have more time to be happy tomorrow. And I can make it up to people then. This logic makes sense, as long as tomorrow actually arrives. It did not for Carly and Adam, who were happy, healthy and productively thought it something living in Oregon. Adam was teacher. Carly was finishing grad school. On the weekend, they hiked near their house and cooked meals for the week. Adam was training for his first marathon. Carly started outdoor climbing. They shared an apartment, adopted a puppy, and began saving for a wedding and kids. They were busy, always too busy, to go on the dream road trip they had planned but kept putting off until the next year. Just before Carly was to graduate, Adam was rushed to the ER with cramps and a fever. It seemed like appendicitis. Shockingly, Adam and Carly learned that Adam has advanced pancreatic cancer and three months to life. Within 24 hours, Carly and Adam were married. Carly quit school and set in motion a road trip come honeymoon across the Pacific Northwest that the couple would schedule in between chemo treatments. One there go found me age. Carly wrote, we threw we had all the time in the world. No matter our age, education or income, we share the same reality. None of us knows how much time we have left. One day, time runs out and tomorrow never comes. This is one of the core discoveries I have made researching time and money. We don't understand. Well, then time is our most valuable resource and it is finite. Chasing money is valuable to a point, but it is an infinity errand. You can always try to get more, and research shows people do that, no matter how much money they have already, given how precious time is. We should put it first, but many of us focus on our careers, constantly giving up more of our time in exchange for more money or productivity. We are conditioned to do this. Since the industrial revolutions, we have learned to put a dollar value on time. We have been told, Literally, that money is our most valuable resource, 
time is money. To gain financial prosperity, we have exchanged things that make us happy. It's great expenses. Many 20 and 30 years old, like Alice, sacrifice the best years of their lives based on the assumption that they can make time for joy tomorrow. I can attest to this. If you had not yet figured it out, I am Alice. Meanwhile, those in their thirsties and forties chase the idea of having perfect children and careers, different personal and marital bliss until they retire. They can take the transformative vacation in the old peace when they older and more settled lad, then 50, 60 and 70 years old, continue to work, putting off life, goals and bucket list, item them until next year, year after year only to run out of time and end up, like my friend dead, with unsaid, unused plan tickets le leaning the inside of their caskets. This sounds heavy and it is my research has shown me that the stakes really are this high. People tend to focus too much on working and making main money and not enough, on having more and better time, most of us, myself included, fail to value time as much as money. This focus on money contributes to the epidemic levels of stress, unhappiness and loneliness that many societies struggle with. It costs us a lot, financially and otherwise. Collectively, researchers call this phenomenon time poverty, and it is chronic.